Hi everyone, it's 3 o'clock here on the West Coast, which is, I believe is 5 o'clock Central Time. Um, we're going to get started in just a minute, but we'll give everyone a little bit of time to jump on. Um, if someone could let me know that they could hear me, that would be fantastic. Hunter's looking out the window. Any comments on the, the sound? Not yet. People are just joining. Excellent. Hey everyone. Get started just a minute. Our model might fall asleep, but we'll get there. Hey babies. Can everyone hear me okay? If someone could let drop in a message or a comment, let me know if they can hear me. <laughs> there we go. Yes, so we can hear, hear you. Excellent. <laughs> okay, we'll give it uh, one more minute before we get started here. While we're waiting for that, I will quickly introduce myself. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Annie Williams. I am a professional pet groomer in British Columbia, Canada, and I am an educator with the Andis Clipper Company. Um, today we're going to be doing a demo on the American Cocker Spaniel's head trim. This is my personal dog, his name is Hunter, and he is a show dog, so we're going to be focusing on how I would trim his head for a show because it's different than how I would do for a pet trim, um, but we will talk about some of the differences um, of, you know, between a dog that walks into your shop uh, for a haircut every eight weeks versus a dog that's getting work done regularly and has correct structure and correct coat and everything. Um, we'll talk about some of the differences as we get going here. So we're we'll just at two minutes, so we'll just give everyone another minute to, to join us. Hey baby, <laughs> you sleepy? Worst case scenario, he might fall asleep. <laughs> Are we in the frame there, are we okay? Yeah, you're good. Hope everyone's staying safe and healthy during this crazy time. Hey Hunter, can you give me a ball? Can we shake? Can we shake? Can you do it? Can we shake? <laughs> Hunter, can you give me a shake? Hey? Can we shake? You can do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just learned that one. He's pretty proud of himself. <laughs> Okay, we will get started here. So I wanna say thank you to everyone for joining me this afternoon. This is one of my favorite things in the whole wide world to teach. This is my favorite breed. I know we're not really supposed to have favorite breeds, but this is definitely my favorite. Obviously I'm a little bit biased because he's my own dog, but um, I really love this breed and I think they're pretty beautiful. And I do believe that he is a very nice representation of this breed. So before we get into talking about any kind of trimming or structure or anything, I wanna talk quickly about the importance of your prep work. So Hunter, this morning, he had a bath and a blow dry. As I bathed and blow dried him, I tried to make sure that all my short areas that are gonna be, oh, I think I just turned off, yeah. All right, so let's ditch this. Sorry, guys. If everyone could let me know that they can still hear me. I was hoping that little, this, the headset would stay on, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. Can you guys still hear me? If anyone could drop in a comment. We got lots of compliments for Hunter. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> He's gorgeous, beautiful. I would have to agree. <laughs> yes, we can hear Everyone you. Everyone can still hear me? Yeah. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, the most important thing for any haircut is gonna be your prep work. So he's had a bath and a blow dry, and he's very tolerant of the blow dry around his head and his ears and everything because he's had it done so regularly since he was a puppy. Um, but I like to try to get um, all these short hairs and all this hair nice and blow dried. You don't want it to be wet when you're clipping it and you don't want, if you let it air dry, it doesn't clip off as smooth. If you can't get it blow dried, if you have a dog that is, you know, really not comfortable around the dryer, even if you have cotton in their ears and all that sort of thing, if they're just really not tolerant of that, don't stress about it too much. It's better to have your dog safe and comfortable than, you know, the quote unquote perfect haircut. As we know, no haircut is perfect anyways, but we try to get close. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about some of the tools that I've used to prep him. Because he has such long coat, I really like to use this pin brush. Um, this is the Andis pin brush um, on his coat. This is a really, really nice brush. The pins are nice and flexible um, to keep his hair from getting damaged during his blow dry. 
I also like to use the slicker brush on his shorter areas like his feet to get a nice fluff during the blow dry on his feet. And it's really nice and gentle. You don't have to push very hard for the brush to do its job. And I also like to use the slicker brush on these shorter areas. He finds it quite uh, <laughs> nice and therapeutic. <laughs> Someone asked how old Hunter is. Hunter is two years old. He turned two in July. So what tools that I like to focus on are, um, I like to use mostly the number nine setting on the Andis Pulse LI5. It has a five in one adjustable blade. Um, so you can go from a 40 to a 30 blade to a 15, a 10, and then a nine. Um, so I really like the number nine setting. If you don't have a five millimeter clipper and you only have a full size blade or full size clipper with a regular blade, a number 10 blade will do the same job. Um, I also really like the number 10s with the ceramic blades. Those are my favorite. Um, this is the Andis Pulse ZR2, um, the Purple Galaxy limited edition clipper. Um, it has a three hour run time, two hour charge time, and is honestly the lifeline to my salon. <laughs> my girls will agree with that. <laughs> um, in other parts, I'm going to end up using um, a 7 blade um, or a 7F blade um, on probably the back of a skull or what I would do on a pet train, but we'll talk about the differences there. Um, and this is also the Pulse Set R Clipper. It's also a three hour run time to our charge time with an interchangeable battery. Um, I like to use uh, the Andis steel combs. They go through his hair really, really nicely. And because he was freshly cleaned, I can know that I'm not going to damage any hair. Um, before we start clipping, I think the most important thing to understand about any breed, whether it's a mixed breed or, you know, looks, if it's a three-quarter something but really looks like one breed, understanding the structure of what you're trying to um, accomplish is going to be, like, such, it makes such a big difference in being able to achieve what you're trying to clip. If you know what you're trying to, if you know what your, this dog is supposed to look like, even if you have a dog that isn't built as well, you can look at him and go, okay, these are his faults, these are his qualities. We really wanna hide this, we wanna make this look this way. So we're gonna talk a little bit about structure here. So I'm gonna make a few quotes from the Canadian Kennel Club Breed Standard. I'm obviously in Canada, so I usually reference the Canadian Kennel Club's Breed Standard. Um, I know that it's very similar to the AKC Standard. I've never looked up the um, Kennel Clubs from uh, other continents, but um, North America, our American and Canadian standards are pretty similar. He's falling asleep already. <laughs> <laughs> so when we look at the American Cocker from the profile, the distance from the nose to the stop, which is where right between the eyes, the stop, should be half the length from the stop to the occiput. So you should have half the length here as you have here. The ear set should fall nicely in line when the head is put level. The ear, ear set should fall nicely in line with the bottom of the eye if your dog's eyes are open and not sleeping. <laughs> um, so that should fall nice and in line with that. You should have a very defined stop, a very defined eyebrow. Your face should be nicely chiseled under the eye. And your head, when looking from the front, should be equally as wide in the back skull as they are in the muzzle. And again, with nice chiseling in between. The expression should be intelligent, alert, soft, and appealing. Um, also from the profile, a lot of our sporting dogs have parallel head planes, so like the English Springer, for example, from the nose to the stop is flat, and then from the stop to the occiput, those are parallel head planes. The co American Cocker um, is rounded, not excessively. You don't want to look like he had, you know, bonk his head on a coffee table and has an egg on the top of his head. Um, but it should have no tendency toward flatness. So those are the things that we want to keep in mind when we're trimming this uh, dog. Um, I do believe that he is a very nice representation of this breed. So what's going to be great about that is we'll talk about his qualities and um, how we're going to achieve the show look. And when you have a dog that is not as nicely bred, how you can um, hide some of the faults that they have. But this is going to be a great example of what you're hoping to achieve um, when it's all said and done. Lots of people are asking where your smock is from. Oh, I, I bought it at, uh, <laughs> I bought it in Pasadena at Groom Expo West. I'm not sure what brand it is. Um, I specifically wore bright pink for you guys to hopefully make my black dog show up as, uh, as brightly as possible. Um, but honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay. Um, so the other thing to remember, um, when we, I always start clipping my ears whenever I start their head trim, just so that I know it's a spot that I don't have to blend anywhere because you have short coat here and you have the long feathering of the ear here. 
Again, on a pet trim, you could do a really short feathered ear. You could do a number three blade on the ears. You could, uh, you know, you could have any, any kind of style of ear that you like, but we're doing a show trim. So I always start right here on the ear because it's somewhere that you, you know for certain, you don't have to blend. It doesn't matter where anything else is to start that spot. So I'm just gonna shift them over a little bit. Good boy, Hunter. Um, the other thing I wanna make a mention of, uh, you can see that his loop is not uh, super tight. When he starts to fall asleep, it might look like it's tight. It's important to have your loop tight enough that you have control of your dog so he's not able to wander all over your table. That's not gonna be any safer than having the loop tight. Um, but it's, it's got enough slack on it that he can move, um, but I don't want it so loose that he can, you know, he has too much freedom and he's gonna, um, you know, gonna risk having him either slip off the table or anything like that or pull too far away or jerk or anything when I'm clipping because that can be super dangerous as well. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the ear set should hopefully be in line with the bottom of the eye. So we wanna make sure that we keep a look at that when we start clipping the ear because I usually start with the bottom of this fold, but if you have a dog with a really high ear set and his ear is now up here, if you start clipping your ear at the bottom of this fold, it's not gonna frame the face properly, whereas you want this clipped area to really frame the face so that your feathering starts at the bottom of your jaw. Again, this dog is built quite nicely, so we're just gonna use um, this little fold to start with. Because he gets done regularly, he was trimmed about a month ago, I think we did some photos. Um, so he's not ridiculously hairy, but that also makes it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. When you have a, you know, a big mammoth of a dog and hair and stuff, you know, it's a big transformation, but it's not as easy to see what I'm doing and what, um, you know, landmarks I'm using to make my, my trims here. So because he was trimmed about a month ago and I do him every time, so I haven't changed any lines in his whole life <laughs> since I've had him. Um, I usually start, I pop this hair out, I double check that my clipper is on the number 9 setting, that's the longest setting on the Pulse LI5 on your adjustable blade clipper, and I find where this fold kind of runs back into the flat in this, of the ear. So it folds in and then it goes back to flat. And I usually pop that hair out and I start just at the bottom of the fold. And I go nice and slow and I'll just start my line. I don't go all the way up to the top of the ear just yet. And then I wanna make sure that as I'm going to the other side of the ear, if you actually take a look at, if you feel the ear shape, if you didn't have any hair on this ear, you would notice that the ear goes in this shape. So you wanna mimic that because you're, excuse me, you're gonna end up running into the folds of the ear if you go straight across all the way around. So we wanna start here and go to the outside of the ear, going straight and then up, using a really, really light touch. And then as I get to the outside, to the edge, I'm using my fingers on the inside of the ear, hopefully you guys can see that um, I'm pushing, I can feel the fold with my finger and I'm pushing the skin out and flat. So again, this is a number nine setting. If you're using a, another, if you're using a clipper that didn't have an adjustable blade, <clears throat> excuse me, you could use a 10 blade. So once I've got the bottom clipped off, then I start working towards the top because I really want to accentuate that nice ear set that he has. Before I do this little foldy part, I like to flip my ear open and I do the inside. And the line that I made here on the outside, I'm gonna mimic that on the inside so I get the top of this ear clipped off, but again, I don't run into those folds because you really, really don't wanna cut them. So I'm gonna use my fingers on the back side of the ear to pop the skin out and keep all that skin nice and flat. And I go against the grain. Again, this dog is extremely comfortable with this procedure. Should never hurt them, but some dogs aren't used to having the clippers around their ears. So if you ever have a puppy or a dog that you're not sure about, maybe it's a new dog coming into your salon, um, just give them, turn your clipper on and just give them a little rub and see how they react. Again, he's very comfortable with it. He's had this done for his whole life. But you really wanna make sure that your dog is comfortable with this before you start clipping around this ear. So now I'm using my fingers to hold the ear open and I'm still pushing the skin forward and I'm mimicking that line on the inside. You can see I only did about a blade width before I moved my hand so that my thumb is right on that fold. So I know that as long as I'm clipping above my thumb, I'm not gonna catch that skin. 
So you move towards the back of the ear and eventually you're gonna meet up with the hair that you've already clipped from the front side. And you wanna make sure that the whole top of the ear is exposed so that you can really see his nice, beautiful ear set. So again, I'm popping this open. I've got my fingers on the folds so I don't accidentally cut him. And I'm using a really gentle touch. I'm not forcing the clipper through. I'm lightly lifting it. And then now I'm going to go back to this piece right here. Very, very gently, I'm going to take my clipper. And I'm using extremely light pressure. And I'm just clipping off the edge of this fold. I've never, um, you know, knock on wood, I've never had an injury with um, a five-on-one blade on this edge of the ear. I'm, again, I'm pushing very lightly and I'm just kind of carving it, um, but I've never had an injury, I'm gonna knock on wood just to be safe, but I've never had an injury on that area. So now that our outside is done, we go back to our inside and we're going against the grain still, so you have to keep an eye on all the directions of growth. I'm gonna go against the grain on this whole ear. So again, you can see the cowlick right here. We're not gonna go too far into that cowlick, but we wanna make sure all this opening of the ear is really nice and tidy and clean. And that when you're looking from the front, you don't have any hair sticking out. So I just go back, do one quick little zip over his ear. I don't like to go over this, you know, the same spot too many times. I don't want to go to his muzzle and then, you know, the top of his head and then realize that I missed some pieces on his ear. So I'd rather just double check that my ear is nice and smooth and then move on. Little hair popping out back here. Use my fingers to stretch the skin open. And now we can move on. So when we talked earlier about the structure of the head being equally as wide in the back skull as the muzzle, typically what we'll see on dogs that come into our shop that are not as well bred is that they're usually they're pretty wide in the back skull and narrow in the muzzle. Um, so what we're going to try and do on those guys is get this really, really nice and tight and flush to the eye. Um, because when you're looking at them from the front, the eye is basically at the widest point of the head when they're open and not falling asleep. <laughs> oh, Hunter. <laughs> And then we want to remember that this is nice and chiseled out and we have a nice plush lip. So we want to make sure that the side of the face is clipped as tight to the head as possible. Um, we don't want to expose any skin or have a bald patch or anything like that. We do want to look like this dog, even though like you can totally tell that this is a lot of maintenance, you kind of want to make it look like it naturally grew that way. You don't want to look at this dog and have um, any major things sticking out or anything look like, you know, it, it looks like it's trimmed right, but that, you know, one part's sticking out and it shouldn't be sticking out. Um, so we're going to try and make sure everything is really nicely blended like it grew that way. So now I'm taking the ear and I'm pulling it to the other side of his face so that I can hold his ear open nice and flat and I can still hold his face. I have my fingers between his jaw bones and my thumb over the top of his muzzle. I'm not pinching, I'm not, you know, really forcing him. He's, again, very comfortable with this and once your dog is comfortable, this should never hurt them or be irritating for them. He's very used to this. He might get a little tickled by the loop on his ear there, so we'll try to keep an eye on that. But I'm gonna hold his ear open i turn my clipper back on. I'm still on the number nine setting. I like to check every once in a while just in case when you put it down, maybe you touch it with your finger. So always double check. It's better to check and clip once because you can't put it back on until it grows back. So now I start in the middle of his ear. So if you can look at the cowlick, I don't know, is that, can you see that in the video okay? So there's that cowlick right there. I'm gonna start in the middle of it. I'm going to start really gently going towards the corner of the eye. Again, I'm not going in and digging. I'm letting the blade do the work. And I start going towards the eye. When I get to the corner of the eye, I'm really hoping, you're okay, babe. You're, you're hoping that the corner of the eye is in the center of your blade. And when you do that, you want to make sure that your head's <laughs> tickling his ear, <laughs> that it's not tipping into the head or into the cheek yet. You don't want to uh, make a divot in the top of the head. You want this to be all nice and, and flush. Okay, get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that out of your system, right? <laughs> so again, I'm now holding his ear open and I'm still holding his face again. I just let him get his little shake out. So as I go towards the eye, 
I'm staying flush with his cheek. I'm not dipping into the top of his head. Hope you can see that with my arm not in the way. I'm not dipping into his head. I want to keep this nice and flush. And I'm going to go straight over the eye very carefully. Again, he's very used to this, but not every dog will be. The brow is, is um, nice and pronounced, so I want to make sure that this is nice and tight. I start going, well, I'm going to take this loop off. It seems to be tickling him. <laughs> Someone said, I don't think I have one dog that sits still enough to let me do that. He's so <laughs> docile. He's a good boy. I'm going to scoot him forward just a little. Oh, he's grunting. I'm tired. He's ready for a nap, I think. <laughs> so I keep my ear open. Hopefully he shouldn't be tickled anymore. But all this that I clipped when I started doing the ear, I'm now just going to work forward towards the muzzle. So we want this, because again, most of our pets that come in are usually wider in the back skull than they are in the muzzle, so we want this nice and snug without balding it. But as we recall from earlier, they're finely chiseled under the eye. So we want to take our ten, nine or ten blade, and we want to chisel this out underneath the eye. But we don't want to dig in too far that we're going to clip the lip too tight and make the muzzle look snipey or too narrow, because we want it equally as wide in the muzzle as in the, the back skull. So I go towards the corner of the mouth. And as I get to the lip, I'm just gonna lightly take the edge of the lip off. So that I'm still leaving this plushness here, but I've got this chiseled out underneath. And everything blends together. So I've gone from full pressure to scooping, to releasing a little bit of pressure, to blending into our lip. At this point, I'll let his ear down and I go right into his stop. Because they have a very well pronounced stop, I'm going to take my clipper and I'm going to start on a 40, uh, sorry, a 90 degree angle of the blade to the uh, uh, top of the muzzle. Start on a 90 degree angle, right between the eyes. And as I'm working towards the nose, you can see that my blade is going flat. And as I get to the sides of the nose, the bridge of the nose, I start to just bend it down a little bit to blend that all together. I scoop out in front of the eyes. Again, they're well chiseled under the eye with a nice plush muzzle. And then what I'm going to do, so I don't end up with a really harsh line there, because that's a really tough area to blend with your thinning shears. I'm going to take my clipper, still on the nine, and I'm going to go one flick up each eyebrow so that I don't end up with a really harsh line in there. So I'm seeing everything, it looks, uh, looks pretty good. Everything looks blended pretty naturally. You wanna make sure that the front of your lip is nice and tight. And you can always go back and check and take a look and see what you're, see what you're doing. And at this point, turn off my clipper, set it down, and I'm gonna clip his throat. This is an area that some people do a little bit differently, but this is how I do it. Um, I, a lot of people will use the breastbone as their starting point for where they clip. Um, when this dog is standing, good boy, good stand, um, I, his breastbone is here. I like to start just a little bit above so when he stacks for the show ring, it really accentuates his fore chest. And typically what I do is I'll choose somewhere between the breastbone and the top line as my starting point. When you have a dog with a sloping top line, just like the American Cocker should have, I usually use the center of the top line. Someone asked um, what length you were using on the bridge of the nose. That was the number nine still. Or okay. if you have a number, a full size, a regular blade on your other clippers, um, you can use a 10 blade, but I, um, I stick to the nine on my uh, five and one there. Hunter, sit. Sit, good boy, very nice boy. So again, because I do this dog myself, all the time. I know exactly where his lines are and I don't really plan on making any changes today because I'm pretty happy with his haircut lately. I can see basically where I've clipped and where it is long. But I um, always choose that point based on the individual dog and their structure. So we'll just go still on my nine again, double check it every time. And I start in the center of the throat. Also, another thing to remember is once you pick your spot that you decide that you want to start clipping, you want to make sure that the head is set level, like it's going to be stacked 
or set up. Um, if you choose your spot while the head is tilted upwards, when you drop it down, your line might drop by an inch or more. So choose your spot when the head is level, and then you're gonna lift the nose, and you can see I'm using my thumb to stretch the skin up. So I'm always trying to work on as flat of a surface as I can. So again, I start nice and light. I'm not digging. I let my blade and my clipper do the work. I always make sure my dog is nice and comfortable and is secured in my hands. And I go up towards the jaw. Good boy, Hunter. I, now once I've got to, um, to my thumb, because I'm pulling the skin forward, I'm now going to hold the face and pull the skin down. So I'm trying to keep everything really nice and tight and flat. I want my chin nice and tightly clipped. Good boy. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. He's tired. <laughs> Again, double check, turn my clipper on, turn it off, always check my blade length, going up towards the bottom of the jaw, and everything looks pretty nice and smooth here. So what I'm going to do is put the loop back on, because I really want to get his flues nice and tight, really clipped out really cleanly in there. So I'm going to put my loop back on. I haven't adjusted the length or the height of my arm, so I know that this should be a nice comfortable height for him. Give him a little scooch forward. Good boy. This is another area that you want to double check that your dog is very comfortable with before you start getting in there with your clipper. So I can give him a little test. Good boy. And I'm going to take my fingers and open up his lip. I'm going to put my thumb in his mouth, stretch it open, and really gently clip this flu out. That's an area that drool and food and water can get stuck in and you really want to get that cleaned out um, to help prevent any infections or anything, any you know, areas of bacteria that can build up in there in that little fold. So you want to clean that out as best you can. You can use your fingers to pop the skin out and give it a nice little clean off. Good boy. I'll do the other side while I'm at it. Good boy. Again, I'm using my thumb to stretch the skin to get a nice clean clipper. Good boy. I'm gonna really quickly do the other side. I'm not gonna repeat everything I just said. Good boy, Hunter. Any other questions on there? Can everyone still hear me okay? There were a couple people earlier saying that they were really nervous about doing reverse on the ears or that they do reverse and then they scissor the edges. That's, yeah, I've, I've never been comfortable scissoring the edge. That just like kind of freaks me out. Um, but if you're comfortable with that, do that for sure. Whatever is going to get the haircut done and get the same illusion with keeping the dog safe, do it. Mm -hmm. This is just how I was taught to do it and I've always been comfortable doing it. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Most important thing at the end of this room is that the dog is comfortable and safe and being treated nicely. And they can still hear you great. Excellent. The model's just about falling asleep on us. <laughs> Chiseling out the eye, cleaning off the lip line. Going towards the eye, keeping the corner of the eye in the center of my blade. Nice and flush with the side of the face. Nice and chisel in her hair. Pronouncing our stop. We will go back to the throat in just a second. Um, the thing about our throat is that it does, when we start to clip into the sides of our neck, it does run into our shoulder, and that's a whole other can of worms and a whole other seminar 
or webinar on structure and shoulder placement, so I won't get too deep into that, but we will finish cleaning that up. The next thing that I would do if this was a pet dog coming to my salon is that we want the back of the skull cleaned off really, really nicely so that the hair um, is short and fine on the top of the head, accentuating or creating the roundness to the skull so that we don't end up with too much hair here. So you can see, like he he's had a he had a haircut a month ago. It's long, but it's not falling in his face. It's you know I'm obviously a pet groomer, so I'm not gonna take him home and cut it off. But you know the first time you get a cocker spaniel coming to your shop that's come to come from another groomer that you know hasn't trained the hair to lay back properly, a lot of the times the owners are gonna go home and go, oh this hair is falling in, and they cut it off, and it um, it hurts me a little bit. <laughs> um, so what you can do. Also, if you, have, if you have a dog, so their coat should be fairly silky. It should be silky all over, but on the head it's short and flat. So if you have a dog with less than correct uh, coat texture, you can use um, a de-shedding tool to remove a little bit of bulk from the head. He's falling asleep, so you can tell this really is not upsetting him. We're just at my salon and someone's alarm is going off, so we'll give that a second to, oh, we're already done. <laughs> <laughs> Never a dull moment. I'm gonna use my de-shedding tool to remove excess bulk. And again, he gets done regularly, so he doesn't have a ton of excess bulk. But if you had a dog with really cottony coat, really, you know, kind of gross hair texture, and all it did is always stand up when you were done, if you just do a few swipes at every groom, don't go too crazy and try to get all of that fuzzy coat out in one haircut, because it's either gonna upset the dog um, if you go over the same spot too many times or you push too hard, that is gonna irritate them, or you're gonna end up with not a lot of hair to um, create the shape or accentuate the shape that you want at the final result. So just give a few swipes, and that's the shedding tool. So what I would do if this was a pet dog coming into my salon, because they get done you know, every six to eight weeks, you only have you know, an hour and a half of, you know, during that six to eight week period to train the hair, and get that illusion of the, uh, you know, you're trying to mimic a dog that's walking into the show ring or getting done all the time. So what I would do is I would take a seven blade, seven F blade. I'm gonna take my dog out of the loop to help show you what areas I'm looking at. And the best way that I've uh, taught people to set the clipper work, here your bum, to set your clipper work if you're gonna use a clipper, is if I take my thumb and I put it on the, front, the top corner of the ear, right here, and I put my hand straight over top of his head, and I put my index finger on the corner of his ear. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's going straight over top of his head in like a U shape or a horseshoe shape, I want to tilt my hand back just a little bit. If I take my seven blade and I clip right where my hand was going straight across the top, I'm going to run out of hair to blend and I might end up making his head look flat. And again, our breed standard calls for no tendency towards flatness. We always want to have a nice round, not overly accentuated round, but a round skull. So I would go front of the ear, to the front of the ear, and tilt back just a little bit. And basically, I would go, he might, I think he's going to lay down. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting, baby. Um, I'm going to use this arch of the neck, so right where the neck meets up with the skull of the occiput back there. Can you see where I'm pointing yep. all right? So the, his occiput is right there. So if I take my seven blade over this little strip, again, because I've tilted my hand back over this strip, I can bulk that off with a seven blade, and then that'll make my um, blending a lot easier on a dog that is not trimmed as often, or the hair is not laying as flat or smoothly, um, that's what I would do. Because this dog is going into the show ring, that is not how I trim his head. So that's just one of the differences that I do between a show trim and a pet trim, because you're trying to create the same illusion. Um, but obviously with our dogs that come in every six to eight weeks, you you know, you know do what you can <laughs> in the time that you have. Um, someone asked, can we use the D-shed rake to blend the pattern lines as well? Are you talking, um, if they're talking about, um, if they're talking about like the side coat where the um, jacket meets the side coat, yes, you can. Um, and then someone also asked, um, how long would it take from beginning to end? Bath, blow dry, brush out, and cut. For this dog, <laughs> <laughs> um, his bath and blow dry takes anywhere from two to two and a half hours. 
If it's a pet dog coming in my salon in a shorter haircut, I can usually have them bathed and dried in half an hour to 45 minutes, depending of course on their coat texture, um, you know, the behavior of the dog, how long their haircut is. Um, but this guy obviously has a lot of hair um, and requires a lot of time. I like to spend a, a good amount of time in the tub leaving in some conditioner to help protect his hair so that he can live an active lifestyle in between grooming days. He goes on lots of walks, he goes on lots of nature adventures. Um, so he, I try to give him the best of both worlds. Um, <laughs> oh, he just kills me. This dog is the love of my life, everyone. So I hope you're enjoying his little antics here. Okay, so on a dog when I clipped this with a seven blade, it's usually gonna start to blend really nicely with where we've clipped our nine in reverse to the top of the ear. Because I'm gonna thinning shear this on my show trim, I'm gonna turn on my clipper, double check the nine setting. So I've gone in reverse to the top of the ear, and then this, I call them wedges, it's not a technical term, but a wedge of hair basically where you can see it goes you know, there's a, there's a, a bunch of hair. <laughs> I clip, I start kind of like I did the bridge of the nose in the stop, I go to on a 90 degree angle and just flip that little ledge off. I'm using my fingers on this side of the face to hold that skin up. Uh, you can probably see that moving a little bit, hopefully with the lighting. I'm popping that up and I'm just trimming that little ledge off. Someone asked your favorite conditioner on a cocker. Oh, that's a loaded question because it totally depends on your dog's hair texture, if it's matted or not. Um, I'm probably not allowed to recommend any specific uh, products in this webinar. Um, I'm not totally sure. I don't want to get in trouble. So <laughs> it depends on your, we'll just say that it goes, it depends on your, your dog and its coat texture and that sort of thing. So um, yeah, conditioner, no matter what. Um, unless the dog has short hair, then I would just wash and dry them. I don't use a ton of conditioner on, um, on short-coated dogs. So now is the fun part. One of my biggest pet peeves is when other groomers, or I get dogs come in my shop, uh, other cockers from other shops, and the whole top of their head is clipped really, really short, like almost seven blades short. Um, that is really hard for me to look at and what I try to do even if you have a dog with an active lifestyle they're not getting groomed regularly so you know the hair is thick it might fall on the face I try to leave just a little bit just a little bit and if we have time at the end of this demo I'll show you on the cutest little old cocker spaniel um, how much length I've left to still create the same illusion but now that I've done all my clipper work and I've done a little bit of de-shedding on the top to take out some bulk I'm gonna take my comb, I'm using the fine end, and I'm gonna comb everything to the side. So again, I've already clipped this off with a nine blade. And this dog is not, he doesn't have, you know, eight weeks of hair, he has about a month, so there's not so much hair. But if you look at him, can, is that straight on? You can kind of see a ledge, <laughs> a ledge from where I clipped with, and he's falling asleep, from with my 10 blade, to all this extra coat that I haven't blended off yet. So I comb everything to the side and everything that hangs over where I've clipped, I'm gonna really lightly thinning shear off. So I'm not going and I'm not digging into all this hair. I'm just taking the edge. Again, if you have a dog that's not accustomed to this, it might tickle them on the top of their ear. So go nice and slow, you can always take more off. And I stop and I check and I look at him from the front, comb it up to see how it's laying. And if it's still a little bit heavy, I comb it over and I keep going. And I usually work in about a U motion, uh, going back towards this section that you would have clipped with a seven blade or that you're trying to thin nice and short to blend into your occiput into the back of your neck. So as I comb down, getting another little ledge over the brow and we should have nicely defined eyebrows. When you look at the dog from the side, you don't want to see any big antennas popping off, which is why I took the clipper, I did the bridge of his nose and I went one little swipe up that way to help clear that off. And I can comb everything down and forward and really, really lightly take the ledge off. 
and double check to see how it's laying. I want to double check my shape. I don't want to make sure that it's not flat, that it's not got so much volume that he's going to shake and it's going to stand like this. <laughs> I try not to use too many styling products in these areas, especially on the pet dogs when they're going home from your salon. You don't want to have their head like glued down with like dog hairspray or gels or mousses or anything like that because when that dog goes home and that product either wears out um, or you know gets really filthy or something, it's going to stick right up and it's going to look a little bit silly and that's when the owner's probably going to cut it off and you're going to have one heck of a time getting it to lay flat from that point forward. Because again, if you have a dog coming in regularly, if you just do a few swipes with the de-shedding tool each time, you can, over time, you can, you can usually get that hair to sit a little bit flatter. And I have had uh, Cocker Spaniels come into my shop and they've had either a really short head trim or do they just have um, not the greatest hair texture. And I've looked them in the eye, the owners, and I've said, if this starts to fall forward, you know, try, you know, do everything in your power to not cut it off because over the next few appointments, I'm going to try to get it to lay properly. And you know, if they cut it, they cut it. It's not the end of the world. It's, at the end of the day, it is their dog, and, and that's what we have to deal with. Um, but if you can, if you can convince them to let you grow it out a little bit and correct the texture and correct the shape, then you're gonna be you're gonna be really happy with the results. So before our model falls asleep here, we should get to finishing. How many teeth on your thinners? Someone asked. Like, is it a pretty fine thinner? It's a pretty fine thinner. Um, it's not a big blender. It's not a chunker. I want to say 57. I want to say 57. Not going to confirm that. <laughs> but it's a very fine thinning chair. So now, take my loop off. I usually don't unclip it every time I take it off, but I want to make sure it's not dangling in my way here. So now I can bring his head down and forward. And all I have to do is just keep combing down and forward and trim off my ledges. And I really want to keep in mind the shape of the head that we're either trying to accentuate or create. So I don't want to make it flat and I don't want to have too much volume. So when I get towards the side and the back of the head, I basically, if I were to draw a line with my scissors, I want to make sure that my scissors are laying in the shape that I want the head to be in its final result. So if you had a dog, so when we talked about proportions earlier, if you had a dog with a either short muzzle or a really long uh, back skull from the profile, you could try and trim this really short. Again, I would rather um, not make any bald spots than, you know, it, it, when you're looking at it from the side, I, in my opinion, it's better to have the skull being a little bit longer and maybe the proportions not as close to perfect as we would like than to have any bald spots. I try not to send dogs home with, you know, bald spots or anything like that. It's really not desirable because at the end of the day, you know, you want the dog to look as close to the breed or the breed standard as you can if that's what the client is asking for, but you, they, they're not going to go home and go, oh wow, the back skull, you know, is that much more in proportion when there's a bald spot on the back of the head. So I go back and I keep blending over to the side. By pulling everything to the side, and thinning, shearing it off, it's gonna naturally layer that hair. So rather than having to either comb it up and scissor it off this way, this helps layer it. And if you're, if you're keeping your shears with the shape of the skull or the shape that you're trying to achieve, it should layer it in a way that's gonna make it nice and round. Again, not over exaggerated, but not flat and not so much hair that when they go home, it's all just gonna stick up. So I said we'd go back to his throat, and we're going to do that now. Any other questions so far? What, what brand is your mat? Uh, it's a paw mat. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Molena Con Creative Paw Mat. It's one of my favorites. I usually use it in grooming contests. It's a special for you today. So, Again, I don't want to go too far into structure of the shoulder and shoulder placement and everything like that, but I want to make sure that my throat is starting to, like this is too much coat right here. When looking from the side, you want to make sure this is nice and tight. So I basically went one blade length, turn it on, check the length. I went one blade length up the middle of the throat. 
And I'm going to start to work the bleed over the folds of the throat. And as I get to, you can, you can use your, your, um, your skin folds as your markers. In the middle, I'm going to go in reverse. And I'm going to go with the grain on the outside. I keep an eye on this line here because I don't want to clip any lower than that. With the grain to that same spot that I went with in reverse. And you can see that when I get to the bottom, I don't just stop abruptly. I take my clipper and I swipe off. And that'll save me a little bit of blending time later. And then nice and tight. And I'm pretty happy with all the clipper work that we're looking at here. So finally, we're gonna finish the muzzle. Um, one little trick that you can do, um, if you have a dog with a nice plush muzzle, you don't need to leave a ton of hair. You can take your clipper on your number nine or your 10 setting on an angle and drag it over the muzzle like this. By doing that, you're not digging in too tight to the skin and you're going to be able to leave a little bit of plushness because again we want that lip nice and plush. I don't like to leave so much hair that they look like a cartoon unless you're going for a more cartoony haircut but on a show dog you're not looking for that. So I don't want to leave so much hair that you know, the judge is going to come up to him and, and run their finger through his face and go, oh my gosh, there's so much hair here. I want everything to look like he naturally grew this way. What number was that on the throat? Was it the nine? That was the number nine. I give my face a light comb through. And again, this is where having your dog nice and clean and properly prepped is really important. Um, it's it makes a really big difference on your faces, especially if they're not clean. We always use a tearless shampoo on all of our dogs, but we like to double check that all these short areas are cleaned just as well as the rest of the dog because if they're not clean, they're still dirty. So we like to work on a nice clean dog. Give it a light comb through and any little ledges or anything sticking out that's not blended, I go in and I just gently trim them off. I'm going to quickly do the other side so we can get a full look at the final appearance here. Good boy. Comb everything down. Trim up our ledges. Again, we're not digging into the hair. Good boy. I'm basically holding him up and awake with my hand, otherwise he'd be melting into the table. Hi, baby. Okay. I'm going to put him back in our loop to just assess where we're at. So again, we're looking at a very nice representation of this breed. But I want to double check that my clipper work is framing my face, that my back skull is equally as wide as the muzzle, but finely chiseled in between. The expression is intelligent, alert, soft, and appealing. My muzzle is hopefully as long, or sorry, half as long from the nose to the stop as the distance from the stop to the occiput. It's rounded, but not overly exaggerated with no flatness. The lip is plush. And everything hopefully looks like it naturally grew that way, that there's nothing majorly sticking out, there's no excessive length or hair or bulk, everything naturally grew that way. And that's uh, hopefully what you're going to achieve at the end of this trim. So I hope you guys found that really helpful. If you have any other questions, you can drop them in the comments and I will happily get back to you. Um, again, my name is Annie Williams. I'm from British Columbia, Canada. This is Hunter, our supermodel for the day, who's just about ready for bed. Um, thank you all for joining us. Again, I hope you guys are all staying safe and healthy, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks, guys.